young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. We're back. Y'all know the drill. JR the Handler, <laughs> Justin Moore. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, we're live. Here we are. What's up, JM? Yeah, here we are again. Um, man, not a whole lot. Just uh, been, as you know, been at the beach for, uh, uh, I guess we're working on our second week now um but yeah uh, been missing you guys out there thanks for uh i know everybody's been checking in on social media and, and even at shows we've done uh what's going on where y'all at we meant to, we we dropped the ball i dropped the ball um so prior to us having um our our vacation uh summertime vacation uh as jr obviously knows we um we went out west and we're planning on doing um a couple of podcasts out there and we had all kinds of craziness transpire <laughs> yeah i was just trying to i was just trying to jog allow. my own memory looking at the calendar i'm like when did all that start because it seems like a yeah a, it was a, like three a year ago, ago because it was i yeah. mean it was a it was a journey and so that and then but we meant to tell you guys all this before but we'll get into where we've been and why we haven't been able to get these things out the past few weeks but uh but we're back now and hopefully everybody's enjoying the beginning or i guess it's still the beginning of the summer yeah, feels like it, 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 it feels hope. like feels like august uh, already yeah. it's warm so yeah i'm sure you can tell i'm my nose is peeling i'm red as a, as a beat uh um, oh yeah but uh and i am beat uh because we were just talking, um, the sun, man, it'll, it'll get you. We were at the beach all day today and we're recording this in the evening. Um, and so it's just like in and out of the water with kids. And of course they want to build a sand castle and then they want, you know, my idea of the beach is this right here, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and theirs is just go, 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 go. Yeah. And um, so You're it'll, like, it'll I just want to sit and Plus, drink a Corona with Snoop Dogg. I don't want to do all yeah, the activities. No doubt. Plus, you feel like a, a pack mule, uh, you know, with carrying stuff. stuff. And it's so hard to walk in the sand with, you know, loaded down. But we're nice. having a good time. We've got some friends here. And uh, you know that. But uh, for folks out there listening. But I'd say we just uh, – I don't know. Jump right into yeah. where the hell we've been. Right. That's funny. You mentioned you loaded down like a pack mule. That just brought back an old flash memory there in the old uh, jugular or uh, the old brain there. And um, I was thinking. I remember that time we were down in Homa, and I had to come get south because y'all had something to do. Yeah. Everybody was still real. I mean, a most of, yeah. Most everybody was still pretty little then. I come around the corner. I was in the old band van that party's got now. I yeah, come around that corner. Party. Yeah, you had South, and you had so much crap lugged onto you. You had <laughs> stuff hooked on every bag, seats, rollers. I mean, you had so much stuff. I felt so I couldn't get stopped quick enough to try to help you. It was just ridiculous how much stuff you had. And so it, that's going to the beach now. Dad, I hadn't been with y'all the beach yeah, in a dads, while. Dads really know these things because they're the ones who usually, generally, uh, carry that weight, so to speak, and. It's like once you get – you hang stuff here and here, then, like, you were, like, trying to help me, but I'm like, I don't even know what I could give you, and it all wouldn't just fall. Like, right. It's like a Jenga uh, thing or something. Like, if, so if, you take, if you take one off of this finger, everything's just going to fall apart. So, That's um, so funny. But, but we're having a good time, man. It's It's been fun. So, for those out there watching this – and listening, but in particular watching, wondering where the hell I am and why our setup isn't like normal. We're, we're down in our beach house in, in Destin, and um, if the audio sounds a little wonky, um, we got to get that straightened out. I, I, my internet is great, but only downstairs where everybody is. And so I'm down here in a bedroom in front of a closet. So that's why it looks a little strange. Uh, we do what we got to um, do, buddy. I, I love it. And my camera setup didn't work. So, uh, and my 
I have my microphone. I'll show you. But my mic stand that was here has seemed to have disappeared. So <laughs> I'm recording. We're recording this on audio and video Zoom. Uh, so if I sound or look funny or whatever, we wanted to make sure to get back with you guys. So because, like we said, I think it was about three weeks ago we started out. I don't oh, know if yeah. you have the schedule pulled up. Yeah. But, oh, it was uh, about a month ago, run really. Down it better than me. Yeah, it was about a month ago when we first took off. That's funny. Your mic stand, Sal's gonna come around the corner using it for a sword in a little bit. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Already, probably. They're yeah. using it for or something. It's saber. Yeah. yeah, it's being used for something in their room. I, that'd be a great tool to have for your kid. You're like, ooh, look at this thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we started out like a month ago. We went out to Minnesota and West Fargo. <laughs> then we had those days off uh, on the way out to Reno. We got flooded out in the mountains in Montana. Oh. And that's where we were going to go. I'll stop you right there. That's yeah. where we were going to do our first podcast uh, was. So we were out near uh, Yellowstone. Yeah, it was North Yellowstone. It was uh, uh, Red Bluff, Montana. It was uh, south of Billings. So that's where, if you guys remember, there was like a hundred year flood. Like they it had still never happened, had. A, yeah, they'd never had this ever. And it was through Yellowstone. It was the specific place we decided to park town. Uh, the actual RV park that we stayed at. I mean, we're down looking at this river that's usually knee deep. And it is rolling. I'm talking about rolling cabins up off the the side of the like the yeah. riverbank. And taking them right down the river. Yeah, we're just trees. standing there going, oh, my gosh. So we had to evacuate. Yeah, 50-foot so, trees just hit the water and disappeared. Yeah, like, whoa. Like nothing. Yeah, it was wild. I mean, water is so powerful, man. But um, but anyway, so that was where we were to do our, um, I think, one of the first, or if not both of the first two podcasts. And um, so we didn't have an opportunity to do that because we, again, had to evacuate. So we get there, we unpack, we got three days off, we're going to take care of it, and then pack everything back up you guys the camp know what we're talking about it's it's a chore well and it was and it was the it was the um it was just a weird way it all worked out too because like you said we got there and it was rainy we got up that morning it was windy and rainy and cold we're like oh crap. <laughs> but it, it, and it just outside. drizzled all day so we walked down the creek and it's rising and it's the worst it's been ever well then we go to bed and the next day the weather's a little better um but the creek's even bigger than it was the day before. Like you said, by this point, it would taken the cabins away that we were standing by the day before. And then the weather yeah. got good, and then we talked to the sheriff, the local sheriffs, and they were like, you guys better get out of here. If just one bridge goes down, uh, everybody's stuck here. No telling when you'll get out. There's one, one, yeah, there one way out one basically way now. Out. Yeah. So we were like, okay, I think we'll pick pack up and yeah. go. Thank you to the fine folks up at Cabela's and Billings for letting us crash in your parking lot uh, that night. That was, uh, that was fun. Yeah. We had a, cornhole championship which you took home the title you and uh <laughs> johnny summers our illustrious yep. merch manager it was fun man we cooked we did get some cooking in which was yep. really good shout out to jeff uh, for leading that and up then, and then got on to uh i forget where we were after that went to reno we had to we packed up went to reno, reno. which is where um to yeah go, that was the rodeo Cody. Yeah, yeah, we had a that was a lot of fun. We played golf with Cody and yep. his brother and dad and some friends. And, and then we um I think we had another maybe day off and then had two or three shows, a couple alongside Chris Young and one with uh Blake. So that was fun. I saw Jimmy Allen. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm, oh. I know I'm leaving people out, but Yeah, on the way there um, is from <laughs> Reno to Fresno was our first or Norco was our first show. Um, we played with Blake and Chris and them, and um, that was the one where the band bus broke down as soon as we left Reno. So I'm I'm up in the middle of the night getting the flight. So they had to fly yeah. in. That was a rough situation. That, that, yeah, I forgot that was the first of the band. We've had a lot of band or uh, bus rather problems over the yes. last couple of weeks. So so you, you like you mentioned you 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 were up. I don't know two a.m. Yeah, well we got them and they somehow miraculously we got them there and we did the show. And then we all bunked up together, and a couple of them rode with us, and the rest everybody piled on the crew bus. And then their bus was fixed and met us in Fresno. Um, trying to think, Fresno For ours was messed up on the way. Ours right. messed up on the way to Fresno, so yes. we're on the side of the road. And Eddie just 
when I say ours, I mean JR. Yeah, mine. in that long stretch. Um, and we just happened to, or Eddie, just our driver, just happened to, uh, we had a belt go out. And <clears throat> he just happened to have saved an old belt that was the exact belt by fluke. Or we would have been booking flights for us. Yeah. So. Well, actually, and that was actually, <laughs> that actually was on the way to Norco. That was leaving Reno also because that was up in northern Idaho or somewhere. Oh, okay. Because that, remember it was that remember that scene it's we been were in a hell was, of a couple of weeks I know, for but, us, but, so I'm getting them all mixed up. Yeah, but you remember that uh that field we were in, uh or that's where we're standing out on the road out there looking. Remember how open it yeah. was, the mountains and stuff was crazy. Yeah, it was it was really beautiful. It I was mean wild. we were standing there going, Golly, and we took a bunch of pictures, but I don't feel like they did it did it justice at all. No, you can't. I mean, you can't really it was like the greenest grass you've ever seen or the the you know most beautiful and it was like and it didn't gr- and it didn't grow we, we took picture after picture after picture we were like that does nothing to showcase this so anyway f- finished up the shows uh well wait just i gotta add one in right? there though i gotta add one in there for while we were out in california now so fresno was the middle show that we did um with Tennille. And that's where the, we, they got the video of the girl coming on stage that slipped the barricade when uh, when I was getting you on for the encore. And uh, yeah, and I I don't know if I sat on stage that night. I I think I did. <laughs> so I she startled for you, my, that's for sure. But you didn't miss profanity. a beat. Profanity. I was like, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. She miss just a came beat. out of nowhere, buddy. Yeah. Um. I mean, she was ended up being harmless, but right. you never know. Like, I know. probably not a great idea for those out there listening and. No, and watching to, to ever to ever do that because you yeah. might get tackled. You might you never know. It's just nowadays, um, yeah. <laughs> but then the next and night, we're, we're going to err on the side of caution. So. Yeah, yeah, and that was in Fresno, and that was cool. That was for the radio station. That was fun. Then the next night, yeah. we went over and played um, with Jimmy and Chris at the um, um, uh, where was it? Santa Rosa up north of uh, San Francisco. Yeah, I think it was the hottest day of all time. It was pretty warm that day. Pretty warm um, that day. But yeah, good. But good to see Jimmy and Chris, yeah. and they both had great shows. And, uh, yeah, I talked to them about the it podcast, fun. so maybe that'll work out at yeah, some point. Yeah, for sure. Something's going on. Um. Yeah, and then we had, and then yeah, then we get back from that. We have a uh, you. We travel back as soon as we get back. You turn around and drive to the beach. I'm home for a day. And Roger and jo- uh, Roger and uh, Dave and Tucker come down here and stay with me and do two nights at the floor of Bama, which was fun, but it was right off the heels of this long, crazy run. So we were pretty beat, uh, but good times. And then and then and then they went home and had a, and then I had a few days and then we went for our annual trip, which we got to talk about that. Our annual trip up to Dewey Beach, Delaware, didn't disappoint. Mm-hmm. Same as always, awesome, fun. No, it was great. Um... Except for bus troubles. Um, bus troubles always. So, so we get the band bus fixed, and they got theirs back. Um, JR calls me because he's going to drive over to my place. Uh, I don't know, we're an hour and a half, two hours from each other. And um, JR drives, is about to drive over or the next day. Uh, and you call me. I don't know. It was last second. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. I was cutting the grass. Take up. Right. Yeah. It was about five o'clock. Like you, just, you just did. Yeah. Right. And so, so it's, hey, just found out we're supposed to leave. Uh, was it that night or the next? The next day. Next day or whatever. Um, your bus is broke down, not going to be fixed to go all the way to Delaware, which, look, it's first world problems. We get that. Uh, we've been in vans. So any bus is, is great. But when you have all your stuff on your bus um, that you need for a show or beyond the show, before the show, after the show, toothbrushes, deodorant, soap, uh, all my boots, all my hats, all, all your, you know, TM stuff uh to help put the show on i mean it's just it's endless yeah 
so we're we find out <laughs> you got about 20 minutes to compile a list of, of things that you need off your bus because the bus slot that it's at or the place is getting fixed uh is about to kick your driver out so i don't make the deadline i don't know if you did uh fortunately eddie went over and begged him to give him a little more time and he just kind of picked a few things for me so we were on a a loner bus out to delaware uh two nights and then uh ohio somewhere in ohio yeah um it was also awesome. freedom fest it was it was awesome the shows were awesome and i but know the- we sound like we're complaining about stuff that it is no big deal and it in the grand scheme of things it's not but these are the reasons that we have not been able because we were going to do do it from dewey beach too yeah. remember we we're going to yeah. do the podcast from there because yeah. it's a great setting it's at the beach uh we love the venue and the people are awesome and so we thought that would be a cool place to do it well all our podcast stuff's on the bus we can't i mean it's just yeah well, one thing we had, after we had another. planned on taking a few weeks off for the <laughs> summer anyway it's just kind of all worked itself into a weird just like the tour schedule and everything else it's yeah. just been a wild month or so but you know we'll get we're gonna have fun we're gonna get on here and chit chat i know we talked about most of the places we've been and that was one thing i can say it was all it were all good shows had great times hanging out with people um you know i mean saw uh, that uh, ohio show played with played with played with uh uh rhett i mean Rodney Atkins, um, yeah, Heath, yeah, Heath Sanders, uh, Scott, uh, Scott had a good time there. Um, but going back to some of these runs, I was looking through my phone. That's why I take pictures of things we do because uh, our memories or something somebody posts because we forget because I will definitely forget. Um, and then I look back at the shows. But we got to remember Reno first. Reno was fun for multiple reasons. I got to give a shout out to, uh, to my buddy Jake Jacobson for opening the show in Reno. Love that guy. It was good to see him and his band rocking. Uh, but that was also the night uh, my good buddy, former podcast guest, um, um, Oh God, Belding, Chad. I don't Belding. even I'm losing remember. My, oh, yeah, I'm, Chad, yeah, Chad, I'm over yeah, here. T- yeah. I'm over here out okay. of. But anyway. Podcast we're, guest, we're a buddy, the it. foul life, Chad Belding, a brother, yeah. crazy wild man, yeah. love him to death, but he's oh. he's a handful. But he brought Ricky freaking Henderson we, to the show. Yes, and I um, him, forget that. Yeah, we gotta um, we gotta bring a couple yeah. drop a couple of those in there. How cool was I that? Totally, totally forgot about that. I just, we're scatterbrained. Yeah, hundred um, percent. And we ain't even been doing anything. We, I mean. As far as just I'm life, about knocking them back or anything, we, we're just sun sun drunk or something. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we're a little all over the place. Plus, we're out of practice. We hadn't done it in a while. But um, yeah, I hope this, this is all is even most, recording. This is the most uncomfortable chair I've ever sat in in my life. I don't even know where we got this. That's why I keep moving around. But but yeah. So everybody that listens to this podcast knows that I'm a huge baseball fan sports but in particular baseball and uh he brings ricky henderson onto our bus and i'm going that's ricky effing henderson <laughs> like real like right there yeah and so i drilled him for i don't know what seemed like two hours of me it asking was. him every single yeah. question i could probably possibly think yeah. of and I was I'm like, sure he got annoyed Henderson. by it, but we, he, we got to leave. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but he couldn't have been this. nicer. Um, and we're gonna have to bring him on here. We talked to him about that. Oh, but yeah. He couldn't have been a nicer guy, more down to earth, and he and his uh, wife I mean, just were just great. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. And I really, watched really you, cool and, like, and 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 I got to watch you, and he, he was just great. He was just really cool to talk to, easy, down to earth, all that. Brought uh, Dave and Tucker over to the bus to hang out because they're huge baseball guys. Um, yeah. But once we got through the initial, like, you know, yada, 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 this kind of stuff, um, you got to talk nuts and bolts with, yeah. I mean, arguably one of the top, five ten top baseball players of all time probably i mean i mean yeah he's and, a, and i watched y'all i watched your conversation and i know it was mm-hmm. more than just you know uh how'd you have fun playing the league whatever y'all really talk some nuts and bolts yeah and and it'll be awesome to get him on here to tell these stories much better than than myself but um yeah i mean we're talking about even the uh for example uh 
he was on second base when Joe Carter hit the the home run. And what year was that for the Blue Jays? Um, Ninety six, seven, something yeah. like that. I forget. That sounds about right. And I I could be wrong, but um, he I didn't realize he he had played for him that year. I had forgotten that, and he was on second base, and he told this great story, which I'm paraphrasing. That he went up to Joe Carter after the game or after the inning or what you know, and um, and said, because I asked, I said, I said, what what pitch did he hit? And uh, was it a fastball right down the middle, hanging curveball? He goes hanging curveball, and he said, and he got that hanging curveball because I was on second base and the pitcher was worried about him, about Ricky stealing, and um, I, he said it. And you better better believe I told Joe about it right after. <laughs> so he goes up. He goes, you know, you got that pitch because of me. So it was in a funny way. He was kind of taking credit for like one of the most notorious home runs in the history of the game. Yeah. Which, which it was all in good fun. He was, but he, he was kidding around. But, but he wasn't lying either, really. Though but I mean, he wasn't know. lying either. No. And I asked him. I said, well, "How did you steal? Like, you know, obviously you steal off the pitcher, not the catcher. You know, at, at that level in particular." He goes, he said he watched the pitcher's elbows. And I'd never heard anybody say that before. You know, I, I hear a study in their moves. Maybe they have two moves and you going on first movement or you're going back and on first movement or you recognize, you know, they just did this move and that next move ain't as good or whatever. But he also said something that I found interesting. You know, me being a, an old catcher, you know, I would – clearly rather throw it to third base than than uh second second base yeah uh, because it was shorter shorter you know yeah. and so but he said he would much rather he had a much easier time still in third base than he did second base and i guess that was because it was harder for the pitcher i don't know i yeah. I, I, I don't know he also i remember you but, said he i mean there you, was so many oh yeah stories but it was just but it shared. was and it was just, but y'all were really talking about just some like really ball, and I thought it was awesome. And uh, but but yeah, yeah, I remember one one I remember hearing him saying was uh, you asking about um, did you have to always have the green light and this and that? He's like, oh yeah, I just had the green light all the time. Yeah, yeah. He he said he he, he never didn't have a, a green light, which yeah. is I mean in the pros in, in college or high school even that's amazing. Yeah, but in yeah. the pros, but I mean he leads the league by far on, you know, all time stolen bases. And, uh, um, I mean, we talked about, um, I believe he was the, was he the AL MVP and like, was it 89? That's, I mean, he had uh, a long, good career. But the, 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 where I'm going with that is you and I met the AL and the NL MVP for the same year in like back to back days or something. I forget who else it was. No, that was you Am guys. Making... That was you guys went to the ball game in Reno <laughs> and y'all saw uh Drebeck. Oh, that's yeah, that's what it was. We got to yep. meet Drebeck. So yep. in back to back days and I think I'm right, we met for one particular season. I thought it was 89, but I I may be wrong. That's close. We met the AL and the NL MVP in back-to-back days uh it was it was nuts man it was a, a baseball guys it was the best couple of days i've had in a long time but certainly my my razorbacks didn't pull off the, the world series and that was disappointing and Ole miss did boo um but uh yeah. we don't have to dive into that but yeah, we're, we're done with yeah it was amazing man it was it was a, it was, a it was an unreal um opportunity to get to not only meet him take a picture or whatever but to, to hang out with him i showed him you know videos of my little girls batting or throwing or and pictures and and he, he was super gracious so it was, yes. it was a lot of fun yes um i'm just looking at the pictures of him here yeah and he still looks like he could play i mean oh yeah and it probably got to be in his 60s yeah i would just guess. fun i mean just fun um, then yeah, then the next night we go down and play the big show out there and a, a big festival deal with Blake and Chris. Uh, and that night I got to hang out with Dan Henderson, uh, Hendo, uh, UFC uh, Hall of Famer, uh, 
fight legend. Uh, was on in the only Olympic team with Angle in '96. Uh, it's good to catch up with him. He's a he's a fun guy to be around. He and his his people mm-hmm. were cool. Um, looking through here, then we got back. I'm trying to see if I had some. Gwen came out with Blake, sang a few songs, which is yep. pretty cool. Yep, they sounded good together. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. You got it pulled up. I'm trying to remember. Then I think that's when we came back home and um, <laughs> flew home, and then we drove down uh, to Destin the next day and did good. Only stopped twice, uh, once for gas and the other time to pee. Uh, so bad. with four kids, twelve and under, that's that's pretty good. Made it in like I don't know nine and a half hours, something like that. But um, but yeah, we've been man, we've been to the beach a bunch. We've uh, eaten a lot of seafood. Uh, you I and I you. talked about we we had gotten our fill last week. <laughs> yeah, well, but then seafood. we went up. But then we went up to Dewey Beach. And <laughs> we had we had a little topper off there. I, we had a little. Oh, yeah. We had to do the crab cakes. I mean, you got to when you're in that part of yeah, the country. You had lobster. Yep, we got the tempura lobster. Yeah. I had some shrimp. Um, yeah, man, the rusty rudder and Dewey Beach, man. I mean, Dewey Beach. Yeah. Let's talk about Dewey Beach real quick. I had some guests show up for that too. It was yeah. awesome. Got to see Marty Smith and his wife and their his yep. two of his buddies from a childhood. I think um, good to catch up yeah, with them. Hey. Joey G, Kurt, but a bunch of people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That place. I mean, we've talked about it a lot on here. Um, Casey Pintar was there. Hey, that's where I got wife. this shirt. Glad you remember yeah, that. that. Yeah, shirt shark. Shout yeah. out, buddy. Thank you, KC. Got, got a got a chance to uh, to hang out with him. Um, if you guys remember, he he's he was the winner of a contest we had last season to be a I guest believe. on the show. Yeah, um, to be a guest on the show, which was he was great on. Um, and then uh, so he that's where they chose. We we flew him out put them up and hooked them up for tickets and had a chance to catch up. Um, yep. It was great, man. It was two great sold out shows. I think next year we're going to try to do three uh, back to back to back there. And, and um, so it was great. I had, I had one day as if I haven't been on the beach enough. Uh, I just went and sat on the beach for like three hours with my headphones in and read. Nice. And so that was a lot of fun. I, I will say it's, <laughs> It's a, it's awesome and it's beautiful, but uh, no offense to the folks up that way, but uh, it the water doesn't hold a candle to ours down here in the Gulf. Um, you and I went down there a little bit, and and not only the color of it, but I stuck my foot in because people are out there frolicking around and splashing and playing, and I thought, man, it must be warmer down there than than what I figured. I stuck my foot in, and I thought it was going to instantly freeze off. I mean, <laughs> it was the off. coldest water. I thought it was the coldest water I've ever touched in my life. It was brutal. So I, how you guys and gals were out there in it, I have no idea. I guess we're just sissies down here in the south. I don't know. But, I, uh, but it was pretty and relaxing and all that. Well, we talked about it. When we got there. It was it was warm, but it wasn't like warm enough where if you got wet, like if you were standing outside, it might be a little chilly because the wind was blowing and stuff. So even if the yeah, wind, I, I mean, I, sorry, I, I sat down there as you know uh, for two three hours, and this is like three to six in the evening or something, where it's you know you would still think it would be really hot. And I wore a sweatshirt out there, and I wasn't coming close to taking that son of a gun off. It was maybe 70 degrees, maybe. I, I mean, it was cool with that wind down cool. there coming right off the the ocean. And you and I touched on it. And I, we were talking about it today, too. Um, man, you think where we are down here, the, that's big water, and it is. But you brought up the point, it ain't even close to uh, oh, no. the Atlantic. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just crazy. When you think about it, man, it's it's nothing compared to that. Yeah, it's just um, so vast. Yeah, I mean, you, the Atlantic's big. Oh, I just found the videos of that of uh, the storm out there, the the water uh, <laughs> taking those trees and stuff away. Yeah, it's hard to explain how much that was. But yeah, the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, when you're out there looking out, you're like, there ain't no breaking point. There ain't no Cuba. There ain't no, you know, Mexican Peninsula. Uh, it's just. 
Uh, it's a long ways out there. There's a few little islands better, dotted out there, but woo. Yeah, if you're going to try to get from one place to the next, you better pack a big bag. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> oh man, I got a. I, I was looking through some stuff here, and I took a picture, and we I hadn't done a podcast, but Marco's uh, girl dad one one two on Insta. Um, <clears throat> baby babysitter backed out on the show so they couldn't come this was uh on the 18th so that was fresno um his wife's birthday uh her name is katrina um so happy birthday <clears throat> katrina sorry y'all couldn't make and get a sitter that night but we'll be back soon we'll see y'all there <clears throat> yeah that was fresno and it was warm out in California, but buddy, it's sticky and hot and warm back home. I know. I, I know everybody in the country is going through it right now. Everybody, stay hydrated. Yeah, I know. Even back home, home for me, uh, just talking to you know buddies, they're like, dude, it's absolutely miserable. And you and I have talked about it here. It if you're like outside mowing your yard like you were doing, or if you're outside and not either in a pool. Or near the ocean, like literally on the beach, it's you're instantly just popping sweat. I mean, oh yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean if you and if yeah, if, even if you're in the shade, unless you got a fan going and you know some help, yeah, it's brutal right now. Well, all right, well, let's take a short break and we'll come back here on the Justin Moore podcast. We've got a lot of more fun stuff to talk about and uh, talk about where we're going to be soon. Come back out on the road soon, so y'all tune in. Uh, right here on the Justin Moore Podcast. Remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast on social media and anywhere you interact with us. I'm JR the Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore. We'll be right back on the Justin Moore Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. It's compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at Bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR, and Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out; it's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer. Shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. 
Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Um, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. Like I mentioned before the break, y'all please remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast uh, when you're interacting on social media. I'm JR the Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore. Jay's got the blue check mark. If it's not that, it's not actual account. Y'all watch out for them fakes. We hate all that stuff. It's just ridiculous, but it's still happening somehow. Um, Justin, I know we got this weekend off. I know y'all looking forward to that. Uh, y'all got any big plans? Y'all got uh, more guests coming down the beach? Any fun stuff planned? We do. We got Amy and Ross here now. Uh, Carrie and Bradley and Tuck and Harley coming down. Um, no big plans, man. Just beach stuff. Just trying to chill, trying to relax. Yep. You know, beach getting ready up. for getting ready for the uh, the next touring push, if you will. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, um, we've got shows coming up. Uh, here we go. We're going to July 15th. We're at the Phrase Pavilion in Kettering, Ohio. Uh, July 16th, we're at the Carrington Pavilion in Danville, Virginia. Um, July 21st, we're at the Prairie, Brand, Prairie Band Casino and Resort in Mayetta, Kansas. Uh, July 22nd, we're at the River Spirit Casino and Resort in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which that's a cool – that's the place we went and did a radio thing a few years ago or a year – couple years ago. Top Golf was near it? Yeah, no. Or am I, this I'm, is, I'm, this I'm is making, a, This is one we went – This is like a newer casino. Brand maybe. new, basically. It was right on the yeah, river. It was yeah. real nice. They had a UFC fight or something, so the main room was all blocked off. But we played a thing for a radio deal in, a, in like a ballroom. But we're doing uh, <laughs> the big – the arena they have there uh this time and that yeah it was super nice food was good it was clean it was one of the yeah. nicest casinos i've ever been to so um yeah, if you're in that area if in the oklahoma uh texas area any of that area y'all come, come to, on come to that one that'll be fun uh and then we got one that we know is going to be a big one and be fun july 23rd saturday night little rock arkansas at the amphitheater yeah that's uh yeah that'll be uh that'll be a lot of fun i'll, I'll pop pop down there from here and uh come back and get the family and crew get ready for uh a week or so after that a couple two or three weeks after that get ready for for south to start kindergarten and ella to start seventh grade which wow. is wow junior high those are that's that's two big uh steps there both of them so um but we're going to enjoy the summer before we get there so yeah, no doubt. Well, it'll be here before you know it. Well, we'll check. Yeah, that back. show will be that show will be awesome. We're, we're looking yeah. forward to anytime you play at home, obviously, and it's a nice amphitheater. Um, so hopefully it'll it'll sell well down there. If you're listening back home, come come on. Yeah, it'll be fun too. I was looking at the bill. Heath will be <laughs> on it with Heath Sanders, another Arkansas native, and um, one of my favorite. Uh, uh, guys out of the Texas area, Mike Ryan, who we've done a few shows with. Mike Ryan's really good, and he's on the bill. He's playing opening that night, so that's awesome. a double bonus. I just I just saw that, so that's super cool. Um, nice. So yeah, that'll be good. Then we're uh, July thirtieth. We're at, in West Bend, Wisconsin. August fifth, we're in Wisconsin. August sixth, South Dakota. Um, and we're going to keep rocking along. We've got plenty of shows to do. We're going to have more podcasts coming out soon. We've got guests we've, we've, we're talking to about lining up some dates and different stuff. So uh, thank you all for tuning in as always. And um, we'll be back here sooner and later. And, um, yeah, everybody enjoy your summer. And um, we'll be back soon. Yeah, we're not going anywhere. If, if something happens and we miss you a week here or there throughout the, I would say, the next month, it's because uh, of just logistics. So I know people were, I don't know if they were concerned or whatever, but, <laughs> and I really try to make the most of the time that I, we have off down here at the beach with my, my kiddos. And, you know, I missed, I missed Father's Day this year, for example, uh, with them, which is the first time ever. Um, <clears throat> my wife's birthday is July 5th. Uh, my youngest daughter's is coming up on the 14th. So, this is kind of our unplug, unwind time. 
Um, so anyway, don't freak out. We'll be back uh, hopefully again next week. Check check us out. <laughs> and hopefully my setup's a little better. But uh, no, this is a little shorter podcast than we normally do. But uh, we didn't want to leave you guys hanging without kind of filling you in on what's been going on and where the hell we've been. So, But you can tell by my sunburn everywhere uh, we've been in the sun. So, and we're a little off our game today because I know for me, not having my original setup with my mic and everything already uh, going, it kind of throws me for a loop. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, I'm in the same but, thing, and I've kind of like, you know, um, just hammered into – I was doing work earlier today and then got into yard mode and home mode <laughs> and doing this and doing that. I'm just all over the place. It's like – well, I feel I like Paul would get off work. It's like I just want to watch, you know, stupid TV for like an hour right. or two until my body reset. I'm like, whoo, it's on. Anyway, well, I hope everybody had yeah, a happy we, we got Fourth of July in. weekend. Go ahead, buddy. I was just say, we, yeah, we got straight in from the beach from hauling all that stuff. I'm about to pass out of heat exhaustion. Yeah, so and, I feel like I and, can't get cool enough. I got then I got straight up in a shower, came straight down here, and so I'm a little out of it but uh but anyway good to check in with you guys hopefully you enjoyed it and, and you're going okay that makes sense where, yeah. where they've been and and we'll yeah. be back real real soon so thank you guys for for always listening liking rating subscribing all that good stuff and uh please continue to comment and post questions and all that good stuff yeah, and um, and Spotify is not broke. I got a couple of those comments. Hey, is Spotify is messed up? Not carrying it anymore? No, we we just had we've been our schedule's been busted, but we're gonna get it straightened out. But thank y'all for tuning in, and we'll be back soon. Uh, remember to tell your friends about the Justin Moore podcast. It's gonna be a fun rest of the season. See you guys next week. Thanks, guys. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 48, Time Waits for No Man. Teach us to re- number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Psalms ninety twelve. I remember my mother used to wake me up to get ready for school and then leave for work whereupon i'd crawl back in bed and go back to sleep until i heard the school bus go past our house then i'd drag myself out of bed and get ready and hitch a ride to school three miles up the road to start my school day by being late for class needless to say i overcame that proclivity with uh, when i entered the real world where nobody gets you out of bed and being late carries stiffer penalties than bad grades The club owners I worked for in the early stages of my career frowned on starting the first set of music late, as their customers may just get up and go down the street to a nearby establishment where the music starts on time. I developed a healthy respect for punctuality, and it became a way of life for me. I refused to waste somebody's time by being late for an appointment, and I expect the same from others. Barring some avoidable glitch, our organization runs on time, and our shows start right on the minute. Anything less would be disrespectful to the people who bought the tickets. Life is too short and time is too limited to waste either one. Time is rationed. When it's gone, we will not be issued more. Let's all make the day count.